Good morning, Bucknutters. Welcome to the Bucknuts Morning 5 here on Friday, April 5th, 2019. I am Dave Biddle. Very happy to be joined by Jonah Booker for his usual Friday visit. Jay Book, I want to start talking about recruiting. Uh, as you look at Ohio State's 2020 recruiting class, um, looks good on the offensive side of the ball. There's no doubt about it. They've got their quarterback. They've got four offensive linemen. Hopefully they can hold on to Paris Johnson. Um, but no defensive players yet. Four new defensive coaches at Ohio State. So that's th those things are probably related. Um, it's very early, are, but are you concerned at all about this 2020 class? Do you, do you like what's happening? Just what are your thoughts on this 2020 recruiting class for the Buckeyes so far? Yeah, we'll start with the offensive side of the football. I think uh, they're vastly ahead of the defense when it comes to recruiting. Obviously, you mentioned uh, they got their quarterback. They're in on a lot of prime time uh, wide receivers. I think they're going to have an outstanding class when it comes to the wide receivers. They got five-star Kendall Milton on the uh, campus this weekend, running back out of California. So that's going to be something to watch. Obviously, the offense put up huge numbers last year, nationally numbers. Dwayne Haskins is going to go in the first round. And, and if you look at Brian Hartline, he's an absolute star in the making, a star recruiting. So I'm not surprised that the offense uh, is vastly ahead of, as far as the defense when it comes to recruiting. Obviously, the Ohio State struggled on uh, defense last year, so it's going to be a situation where they need to prove it. I'm not worried right now. You have a lot of new coaches on that side of the football, so it's basically going to be about establishing those relationships. But the main thing is they're going to have to show it. Uh, recruits want to see production, and they want, they want to be uh, shown that if they play in a defense, it's going to be a simplified defense where it's going to maximize their talent. So I think on the defensive side, when it comes to recruiting, it's going to be a situation where they're going, they're going to need to prove it on the football field. The offense, uh, they, they really proved it last year. And with Ryan Day still there calling the shots, they're still going to be able to get those high-level recruits. But the, on the defensive side of the football, they're going to need to be able to prove that the defense is fixed, especially with the new coaching staff in place on that side of the ball. As you look at the Paris Johnson recruitment, obviously Paris Johnson and his mom were very close with Urban Meyer. That they that really made them take a step back when uh, when Urban retired. Um, and you know, I mean, they didn't decommit though. I mean, he didn't decommit. He could have decommitted and he didn't. Um, but he's still looking around. Just you know, what's your what are you hearing? What's your gut feeling about Paris Johnson? Do you think he'll be a Buckeye in the end? I think he will be a Buckeye. He's a kid that's doing his due diligence here. Obviously, you mentioned that. Uh, him and his family was very close to Urban Meyer. He's currently pretty much on his uh, all SEC tour and down south tour. It sounds like he's and looks like, according to his social media, he's visiting every school in the south right now. Uh, a guy that is a number one tackle in the, in the country, he's going to be able to pick and choose where he wants to go. I don't blame the kid for making sure that uh, he's taking his visits and and getting the, the best feel for where he's comfortable at. Uh, things change. Obviously, he was very close to Urban. But in the end, I do believe he will be a Buckeye along with his two teammates. As you look at spring ball so far, um, we'll start on the defensive side of the football. What stands out the most? What are you uh, pleased with uh, as you look at the Silver Bullets as they head into this 2019 season? I I'm very pleased about the change in scheme. Um, what they're what they're going to be asking of the players, especially the defensive backs, where they're go they're going to be playing more zone concepts. They're not going to be uh, ride or die to the very end when it comes to man coverage, uh, which which we saw under Graciano. So they're going to have a little bit of both, and also getting their heads around and finding the football with them being able to play more zone concepts. Guys are going to be able to uh, find the football, which you're going to see an increase of hands being placed on the football. So I'm very excited about that. I'm still, I know a lot of, uh, you know, fans on our message board, they're very salty about uh, the linebackers with uh, Pete Warner and, and Tough Boiler still getting uh, a lot of the lion's share snaps with the ones. Oh, you've noticed that too, have you? Um. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've noticed that too. And, and I caution people, let's let's give the, the new coaching staff an opportunity to see if they can really coach these guys up. Tough Boylan 
shouldn't have been on the football field last year. He had no business playing. The guy was not healthy. It was look. It looked like he was running in mud because of that injury. So let's see what he uh, can do under the new leadership with the defense with the defensive coaches. And the same thing with Pete Werner. I know um, on the message board, it, it, the the fans are just like, "What in the world? How can you have two uh, vastly different schemes, two vastly different coaching staff come in, and they're still playing the same guys?" Uh, I can understand their frustration because. Pretty much uh, the, the fan base is uh, their shell shot after seeing what we saw last year from the Silver Bullets. But I, I caution people, let's just give uh, the new coaching staff a chance to see if they can really coach these guys up. As I look at the offensive side of the ball, it, it's interesting. I thought this was going to be Justin Fields' mania this spring. And I don't know if it's Ryan Day has done a good job of, of, of just kind of you know, kind of dousing that a little bit, kind of, you know, putting the flames out a little bit or whatever, however, whatever phrase I'm trying to think of right now, um, downplayed that as much as he has. Um, but I thought it would be like Justin Fields, Justin Fields, and everybody would be so hyped about it. Um, what, I mean, why do you think there's not as much hype as maybe we thought? Uh, you think it's Ryan Day just doing his best to downplay it, or, or what do you think is going on there? Yeah, I think it's Ohio State uh, being very um, clever when it comes to downplaying. You obviously don't want – uh, the the pressure getting to Justin Fields right now. The the main thing is just getting him uh, comfortable with the offense and his teammates learning the scheme. You know Ohio State, and you know Dave, you've been covering the Buckeyes for a year. The hype train can can it can go absolutely off the rails. I mean, you think about a lot of the guys who was absolutely hyped to the umph degree. I mean, think about the hype train that Dontre Wilson had. Everybody felt like he was the next Reggie Bush or something. And, and when it comes to the quarterback, it can be ramped up even more. So I think it's smart by the coaching staff not really uh, getting that hype rolling. Obviously, he's performing at a high level. He got his black stripe removed. It was in the boarding house that he really brings an element uh, to the offense uh, that you don't see out of Matthew Baldwin because it fields – uh, ability to really be a dual threat quarterback. So I, I like it being quiet. I don't take it as a sign that he's not performing. I just think it's smart for Ohio State just not uh, having this guy coming in like he's the next Michael Vick or Deshaun Watson. Let him build to that. Uh, obviously, you want to hear a little bit more buzz as we're heading into the season. But right now with spring ball, and he's just now getting on campus allow him to get his feet wet first before the hype train goes completely off the rails. He's taken the first team rep, so he's clearly the leader right now. Ryan Day has stopped short of saying that. Um, Ryan Day has also said he's not necessarily going to name a leader after spring ball. No one expected him to, to make any grand proclamations like, this guy is my starter no matter what happens. But um, it'll be interesting to see if he does name a leader after spring ball because even though Ryan Day said – uh, when asked about it, he said he doesn't necessarily need to name a leader after spring ball. He didn't rule it out. He didn't say he wouldn't do it. Um, you know, we're we're getting to. I mean, the spring game is a week from Saturday. Do you anticipate Jay Book that Ryan Day will at least say something like Justin Fields is like a little bit ahead, but it's a close battle? Just what do you think he's going to say at the end of spring ball about the quarterback competition? He may not give it to the public like we want to, but within those facilities and within that locker room. Those guys know who the starting quarterback is, and, and they essentially know who some of the starters are going to be. If you're the quarterback and you're getting uh, all of the first team reps throughout the entire spring, the anticipation is that's your actual quarterback. Now, the head coach doesn't necessarily need to come out and say it. Uh, obviously, if Fields is getting the majority of the first team reps throughout the entire spring football, He's going to start fall camp getting the first team reps at the quarterback position. So uh, it, it would be nice for us, you know, in the media and the fans to say, hey, that's our guy. Um, I don't think Ryan Day will actually give it to us, but I, you will have to know inside those locker rooms that he's the man considering he's getting the lion's share of the reps. No doubt about it. I agree with you 100%. We'll get a chance to interview Ryan Day Later today, practice is open this morning for the Buckeyes, and then afterwards we'll get a chance to interview Ryan Day and Greg Madison. So keep it locked to Bucknuts for all that. Again, practice, the entire practice is open to the media today. So really looking forward to that, to, 
really looking forward to that this morning. Thank you so much to Jonah Booker for his wisdom as usual every Friday. Thank you, Jay Book, and thanks to all the listeners out there for tuning in to the show. I appreciate it. Hope everyone has a great day and a great weekend. Let's hear that Buckeye swag, best in band in the land. Bye.